Hello, you're listening to Nick RP Green, no internet pseudonyms here. What you see is what you get. Recording on the 18th of April 2012, and today I'm going to be talking about achievements. <laughs> The game in the background today is Dungeon Defenders, uh, as Achievements isn't particularly a specific game, I thought I'd just put a game in the background instead. Dungeon Defenders is a strategy RPG-ish type of game, I'm really enjoying it, I've been playing it with my girlfriend together and it's really good. I got it in the Steam sale and I really really enjoy it. It's different, it's fun, it looks really nice, it's really cartoony, you know, a bit tongue in cheek and yeah really really good. Anyway on to today's discussion, achievements. In his mailbox for Friday the 13th of April 2012, whilst talking about Dark Souls and its ports to PC using games for Windows Live, Tilt Biscuit had this to say on the subject of achievements. Why are the save games encrypted? Most likely because of achievements, because for some inexplicable reason Microsoft holds these pointless internet badges up to this gold standard of this must not be corrupted, our system must not be corrupted by cheaters and so on and so forth. It's like, achievements mean nothing, nothing, and there's no excuse for that nonsense. In fact, I am upset that there's even an achievement system built into games for Windows Live because it has caused that to happen. Achievements mean jack, and I wish people would stop believing otherwise. You can keep your damn internet badges, and you can find them as important as you damn well please until they start to interfere with the legitimate process of playing a game. When that happens, when it starts to cause you problems to the point where people's save games start disappearing, and indeed online and offline save games are not properly compatible with each other, then there is a problem. Now whilst Total Biscuit makes a very good point in that achievement systems become a problem when they are causing issues with save game files and the such, as is too often the case with a system such as Games for Windows Live, I couldn't help but have to cry out against his attitude towards achievements in general. I enjoy Total Biscuit's work and regularly listen to the mailbox and his other work that I find relevant to my gaming interests, and I do normally agree with many of his opinions. He does talk sense, particularly on issues such as piracy and the whole Mass Effect 3 ending thing, to name but a couple. That isn't to say I blindly agree with his word, I don't agree in some areas with his opinions on day one or on the disc DLC, but Friday's mailbox was something I just couldn't leave aside. To begin with, I am an achievement whore, I'll openly admit it. When I'm pushing for an achievement and my friends call me an achievement whore, I will quite happily say, or rather shout in the moment of trying to get the achievement, yes, I know, I am an achievement whore, now leave me alone and let me get my achievement! So yes, I may be just a little biased in this argument. And to reiterate, I completely agree with some of Total Biscuit's views that an achievement system that causes issues with saved data, such as the trophy issues with the PlayStation Vita and having multiple players on one cartridge, then yes, that is a bad achievement system and that either needs fixing or removing completely. I would also agree with him that Microsoft encrypting its saved data so that people cannot cheat to get achievements is taking things a little too far. If someone wishes to cheat, then let them cheat. In the grand scheme of things, cheating to get an achievement should be completely irrelevant to Microsoft or any other developer or publisher. If I hack my copy of Halo Reach to get the achievement, a monument to all your sins, for completing the game on Legendary all by myself, if I cheat my way to that 150 gamer score, then who cares? In the grand scheme of things, who really cares? It makes absolutely no difference to Bungie or 343. It certainly makes no difference to Microsoft because as far as their systems are concerned, I could have just got the achievement properly. The only people it affects are the person who does it and their online friends. You cheat your way into an achievement, you are only cheating yourself. If it matters to you that much that you get it, then you will either try your goddamned hardest to beat the annoyingly awful final boss on Sonic Generations without taking a single hit, or if you want to cheat for it, then you need to seriously ask yourself why you are playing video games. What I disagree with from Total Biscuit's rant is him saying that achievements mean nothing. Achievements mean jack and I wish people would stop believing otherwise. Those were his words and I have to totally, totally disagree with him. In the bigger picture, yes, achievements are not terribly important. They certainly aren't a great way to test a player's skill. I can have obtained all 394 Team Fortress 2 achievements but still be absolutely outdone by someone with only a third of them because that player is simply better at Team Fortress 2 than I am. But firstly, what they do do, and Team Fortress 2 is a very good example of this, is give the player a reason to keep on playing the game. 
TF2 is a reasonably repetitive game. Yes, there are lots of maps and game modes and characters to play as, and I'm not saying that it is a boring or bad game, I absolutely love TF2. However, it is repetitive. You can only play the same map so many times before you begin to tire of it. Team Fortress 2 works really well because it has a great development team and a great community that makes an effort to keep the game fresh and interesting. But the achievements in it are a really good way of pulling players, particularly players like me who love achievement hunting, to keep playing the game. There's always that bit more to do, or in the case of Team Fortress 2, a hell of a lot more to do. To me, once I have finished a game's main modes, I consider completion of that game to be the attainment of every achievement, because that's what they are, an achievement. I prefer the term achievement to trophy because it is an achievement to get them, a trophy does suggest some sort of competition that you've placed in. Just like the rest of the game, the developer has set you a challenge, and you have beaten that challenge, and it's satisfying. I was so satisfied when I got that achievement that I was talking about earlier for Sonic Generations, because I hated that boss so much, it is the worst part of Sonic Generations, that final boss is just terrible. But I perceived and finally proved to myself that I could get past anything Sonic Team could throw at me, whether it was very very good or in this case very very bad. And it feels good, it felt really good, it's an accomplishment, it's being able to say yes I am good enough to do that. No different from beating a level or beating a boss or even beating an entire game. The developer has set you a challenge with an achievement and you have beaten him. And behind that is the same enjoyment of gameplay, or in certain cases such as mine, frustration of difficulty that comes with playing and finishing the game itself. If you are to say that achievements mean nothing, then you may as well be saying that completing a game means nothing. Because without the gratification of completion, all you have with completing a game is the end of the story. If you're only playing a game because of the story, i.e. you have no interest whatsoever in the gameplay at all, I am not suggesting you can't play a game because you like the story. If you don't have any interest in the gameplay at all, then you probably want to trade in your Xbox and buy yourself a DVD player instead because there's a medium there that you will prefer. I'm not saying you have to obtain every achievement because otherwise playing the game is pointless but to say they mean nothing seems to contradict part of the point of playing the game in the first place. Secondly, achievements are a great way to play games with friends. If, like me, you and your friends become quite competitive when playing games, achievements are a great way to track how you compare. Xbox and PlayStation both have a very simple system for doing this, though Steam, as far as I can find, does not have a system for comparing your achievements with your friends, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Comparing yourself to others and being competitive is part of human nature. You feel as though someone is doing better than you financially, if they have a better car or a nicer house or more expensive things, in the same way you think someone is doing better at Metal Gear Solid because they have more achievements than you. I did say earlier that achievements aren't a great comparison of skill, but it certainly is a great comparison of completion, of effort, of accomplishment and in many cases skill, but certainly not all of them. I like to compare achievements with my friends to see if I'm doing better or worse, to see how well they are doing, or how far they've gotten through a game. If anything, it's a great spoiler warning in discussion. If you know that your friend doesn't have the achievement for beating Chapter 5, you won't spoil it for them by talking about the end of Chapter 5. My enjoyment in comparing my gameplay with my friends is the reason I've recently gotten into Raptor, an online collection of all your various platform statistics all in one place and easily comparable to your friends. Whilst it still has a couple of issues to sort out, such as not being able to track PlayStation 3 playtime and no retroactive playtime record on the Xbox, it is a very handy system to have with your Steam, PlayStation Network and Xbox Live achievements all in one place and with the ability to compare stats with your friends on the fly. Uh, if you're interested in Raptor, I have posted a link in the description of this video. We all like to boast and brag from time to time and there is no harm in being competitive with your games and comparing achievements is a simple and effective way of doing that. Finally, and this goes back to the idea of completion, Achievements are often a good way of knowing that you've finished the game as much as you can. Checking the achievements list opens up a checklist of things to do. For example, the room containing the Boreolas, the ship mentioned by Dr. Kleiner during Half-Life 2 Episode 2, uh, which is a secret in Portal 2, would have remained completely hidden to me if it hadn't been for Ship Overboard, the achievement for finding the room in the game, because I missed it the first time I played through Portal 2. Achievements allow us to experience bits of the game that you may have missed, and gives us the opportunity to get as much out of the game as possible. Not having all of the achievements means there's a bit of the game you haven't done, and that gives you the incentive to play the game to its full potential. 
After finally obtaining all of the trophies for Batman Arkham Asylum, I finally decided it was time to trade it in because as far as the game was concerned I had played as much of the game as possible, there wasn't really anything else to do and any more play of the game would result in a repeat of what I would already done. Obviously this only works when the achievement system in the game is very extensive and Batman Arkham Asylum is a very good system for it. Each game will be different and each person will have their own opinion of whether the achievement collection covers enough of the game. But nonetheless, achievements are a great help in determining whether or not you have more of the game to play. I like achievements. I make an effort to obtain achievements and I get a lot of satisfaction from that. I am in no way suggesting that everybody has to want to get them. I am certainly not suggesting everyone has to like them. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But to claim achievements mean nothing seems like a false statement or, at the very least, slightly unfair of Turtle Biscuit to claim. It is in human nature to compare, to compete, to have a sense of accomplishment so it only seems natural to want and enjoy a system in our video games that adhere to that desire. So there you go. As usual feel free to discuss, argue and deliver your own opinions in the comments boxes below. I will gladly reply to any responses that are made. Subscribe if you like what you've heard and I will see you next time.